CAL FIRE CONTINUES TO INVESTIGATE THE CAUSE OF DEADLY FIRES EARLIER THIS MONTH THAT DEVASTATED MUCH OF NORTHERN CALIFORNIA. PG&E HAS BEEN ACCUSED OF SPARKING THE MOST DESTRUCTIVE OF THOSE FIRES, THE TUBS FIRE. AND CONSUMER ADVOCATES ARE CONCERNED IF THE COMPANY IS FOUND RESPONSIBLE, IT COULD MAKE CUSTOMERS PICK UP THE TAB. IT'S AN OUTRAGE THAT UTILITIES WOULD WANT TO PUSH THE BURDEN you know, OF THEIR NEGLIGENCE ONTO THE BACKS OF CUSTOMERS. PG&E has weighed in on a different case that could set the precedent for how the state handles the fallout costs from these latest wildfires. Good evening, I'm Tony Lopez. And I'm Christina Janes. CBS 13's Macy Jenkins joins us now, getting answers on whether we might all soon be paying the cost for the wildfire damage. Macy? Well, Tony and Christina, to understand why this is a concern now, we have to go back to three wildfires in San Diego back in 2007. San Diego Gas and Electric was found responsible for those fires, but the company wants to charge its customers for money not covered by insurance. Now PG&E is speaking up to say it agrees those costs should be spread out among customers who pay for power. Hundreds of thousands of acres have burned in Northern California since October. Now CAL FIRE and the California Public Utilities Commission are investigating whether or not PG&E power lines are to blame for sparking the flames. It's a terrible disaster. PG&E says it has $800 million in insurance, but damage from the wine country fires could go up to an estimated $12 billion. They're laying the groundwork so if, if there is responsibility for the wine country fires and all of the, the devastation that we saw, they'll want to shift that to, to rate payers. And uh, we have to take a, a strong stand and position to not allow that to happen. But to understand this story, we have to go back to three fires in San Diego County in 2007. San Diego gas and electric power lines were found responsible for starting the flames, but the company still asked the State Public Utilities Commission for permission to charge its customers the $379 million not covered by insurance. Mindy Spat works with the Utility Reform Network, a consumer advocacy group. The decision that the commission makes about SDG&E would establish some sort of precedent, possibly, that PG&E might rely on later. Last week, PG&E sat down with a PUC commissioner and asked that in San Diego's case, the commission not establish a precedent of disproportionately placing all the risk on the utilities rather than spreading the cost. The reasoning, wildfire risk is increasing with climate change, drought, and bark beetle infestation, so fires can't all be controlled by electric companies. But if PG&E is found responsible for a fire, why wouldn't the public Utilities Commission make it pay. I asked State Senator Jerry Hill. Their profit every year is about a billion dollars, maybe a little bit more. That's the profit of, of PG&E. So this could conceivably put them out of business, put them into bankruptcy. Now, two judges already denied San Diego Gas and Electric's request to pass along the $379 million to customers. The Public Utilities Commission typically agrees with the judge's recommendation, but they aren't obligated to. So, Macy, is there anything state lawmakers can do to keep this from happening? Well, I talked with Senator Hill, and he says yes. Along with his colleagues, he's working on legislation that would prohibit companies from passing the cost on to customers, and he hopes to be able to introduce a bill in January. Well, let's hope so. We'll see what happens on this one. Macy, thanks so much.